Hello, welcome to another video by LSX Engines, Tuning, and Marine. In this video, I'm going to show you how to statically time a uh, Mercruiser multi, this is a 5.0 liter multi-port fuel injection engine. Um, this is a later uh, model fuel injection system off the, uh, approximately, 19, well, it's, I guess in 1996 it was appeared in the cars and trucks. It may have appeared in the Marine versions too at that time, I'm not sure, but I just know in 1996 is when it started appearing in the trucks. And, the 5.7, 5.0, and 4.3. So this distributor, if you notice, I just said uh, statically time because um, in these type of engines, there is no dynamic timing. Once you install the distributor, um, there's you don't adjust the distributor to set timing. The timing is actually determined by the location of the crank sensor, which is, let's see if I can find it here. It's right down here on the bottom of the engine. So the crank sensor is right here, right there. And its location, which is fixed, is, by, is fixed by the uh, on the timing cover. And there's a trigger wheel inside the uh, inside the cover. It's got four poles, which I think I've shown in previous videos. But that that pole or that trigger is is uh, fixed on the crankshaft by the key. So there's no adjustment for the trigger. There's no adjustment for the crank sensor. So that crank sensor fully determines the timing. So the timing in these engines is not adjustable. When I say timing, I mean the dynamic timing. However, you still have to install the distributor in a way so that it's roughly timed. It's called static timing. It's roughly timed so that when the engine is set for number one at top dead center, this rotor right here is pointed towards the number one tower in the distributor cap. That's your rough mechanical timing that determines, that, that makes sure that the spark gets to the right cylinder because the distributor still distributes that spark. So um, what I'm gonna do at this time, since I forgot to do it before I started this video, is uh, I'm gonna have to rotate this engine over. I'm gonna find top dead center number one, and I'm gonna rotate the engine around until I have uh, number one cylinder on top dead center on the firing stroke. So I'm gonna do that now, and I'll get back with you when I've got that done. All right, I now have the uh, engine on number one cylinder on top dead center on the compression stroke. And uh, let me explain how I did that. So in the past, I've mentioned in other videos where um, Sometimes we'll have the oil cap right here, and this is cylinder number one, so you can feel the the uh, intake valve rocker arm moving as you rotate the engine around. If you feel it moving and the and the mark's coming up to top dead center, you know that you're at the transition stroke. It's going from exhaust over to intake because the two valves are, are swapping. Your exhaust is finishing up, or your exhaust is finishing up, and then your intake's opening up. So if you're top dead center number one, but those are moving, that's the wrong side because you're in the transition stroke, so the compression stroke. So you got to rotate this another 306 degrees, one full turn, to get it back to top dead center on the compression stroke. All right. However, I don't have a hole here where the oil dipstick is. It's actually back there, and uh, so, and that's cylinder number seven. So I've got my finger right now on the intake rocker arm for cylinder number seven. So what I did was um, I just looked at the firing order. Or, or just you know thought about the firing order so it's one eight four three six five seven two and then starts over one so seven two one seven pre uh is before one so i had a torque wrench on the front of the engine rotating and i put my finger in here and felt for the uh rock arm to be moving so when it's moving i know that that, it, that cylinder is um let me think here so it's each cell on the V8 fires 90 degrees from each other. So seven, two, one. So that means when this was rocking, the number one cylinder was rocking, but this mark was 180 degrees away. So it was on the bottom. So I'm moving around, I'm moving the engine this way. So one is to follow seven. So as soon as I felt seven, I know one is about to rock. So that means when I rotated this mark up to TDC, one would, one would be rocking, so that's the wrong side. So when I felt this move, when I felt number seven uh, intake rock arm move, I rotated around until I got to TDC, and then I rotated one more time because I knew if seven's moving, one's about to move, and it would have moved on TDC. So when I get there, I rotate it one more full turn, and I'm there. And then I double check myself. So as I was rotating it around another full turn, when I got this mark on the 180 degrees away, and I'm rotating, I know the pistons at the bottom about to turn, about to go up. I put my finger in the spark plug hole, and I could feel. It tried to push my finger out. So I know that that's trying to compress. So that's cylinder number one on the compression stroke. So the engine's now ready to be timed, uh, statically timed. I've got the uh, mark, the TDC mark on the, uh, there's your notch on your on your uh, timing cover and it lines up with this tape right here. That, and I've already checked this in another video. This is accurate. So I know it's at top dead center on the number one cylinder, on the number one cylinder and the compression stroke. All right, so now we've done that, we can proceed to, 
install this shiver. Um, by the way, you see a lot of rust and corrosion on this intake. The paint's worn off a long time ago, and uh, the rust um, on this intake is flaking, got rust flaking away. Um, I don't know how, how much longer it's going to last. It's cast iron. Um, I would recommend that uh, I'm not let this boat stay in moisture a lot because it's going to rust uh, through one of these days. But anyway, um, that's something uh, he can deal with somehow. I'm not. Um, I thought about painting it, but it, you paint over rust. I just think it helps trap moisture, and makes it go faster. So uh, unless you get rid of all the rust before you paint it, I don't really see the point in doing that. So to me, it's, it's better just leave it exposed to the air and keep the air drier. So, all right, so we're now ready to put this distributor in. I've got the engine at the top of the center where I need it to be. So now what we have to do is turn this rotor to where it points to the number one tower in the distributor cap. So where is that? So here's the distributor cap. So if you look at this cap, there's number one right there. These terminals are labeled. There's one, let's see, it goes into firing order. So there's one, eight, four, Where's three at? Three is right there. But you can see how the, the pattern, that this kind of looking, this look wormy looking thing here. So if you notice one, eight, four, three, six, five, seven, two, all those wormy things are taking the wires over to the cylinders. But they did this because all the odd, you can see all the odd uh, spark plug wires come off that side of the engine and the even ones come off this side. It just makes it a little bit neater spark plug arrangement instead of having wires cross over each other. They did the crossing inside the cap, as you can see. So let's go back. So we found one. One is right there. And if you notice, there's a flat in this distributor. You turn it over this distributor cap. So if I turn it over, you see there's a flat right there. So one, it looks like they got it. One is right in that crease where that flat starts, right there. You see it again. So you can see the flat. So one is right there. Simple. So if I were to put this on the, on the distributor, you can see that my flat, let me see if we can get this around here. My flat starts right here so that this part right here in this cap where that where it's round all of a sudden it goes flat right there there's number one right there i'm not sure if we marked it it says eight this is eight i think there's a mark for six somewhere in this thing they use the same distributor for v6s and v8s um but anyway so number one is right here where my fingernails at so what i have to do is install the distributor so that when the distributor drops in this rotor is pointing pretty close to that mark right there, all right? And it'll be statically timed. However, this right here is not a, it's not an ignition module under there. I would, I would take this rotor off, but um, I have other videos that show what's going on under here. This is a cam sensor. And what that does is it tells the computer, in order to run these injectors sequentially, sequential fuel injection means it fires each injector in sequence at the right time. They're not all fired at the same time. That's called batch fire. This is called sequential fuel injection. And what the cam sensor does is it tells the computer which, the in order to do sequential fuel injection, the computer has to know where the engine's at in a 720 degree cycle, not 360. So with a, with a can, or the crank sensor that's measuring the crankshaft, you, can, you can't tell where the engine's at in three, 720 degrees. You can only tell in, in 360 degrees because in 360 degrees it starts over again. So you need another signal from something that tells it when it's in the in a 720 degree cycle, the first 360 or the second 360. And by the way, I did a very detailed uh, video on this uh, uh, relating Dodge to GM fuel injection, and I'll reference that uh, that video in the description. But um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, bottom line is that um, you have to have a cam sensor to do sequential fuel injection because the computer can't tell how to time the injectors without it. So once I get this rotor pointed here, I am now statically timed. But I do have to make one more adjustment, and that's to keep this cam sensor has to be synchronized with the crank sensor. The, the crank, the computer's expecting the cam signal to occur in a certain time period on that crank sensor. If it doesn't, you get a, a code, I don't remember what it is, it's either P01, I would say P0132, 134, I can't remember. But that code is basically saying the cam sensor is out of sync with the crank sensor because it has to occur within a certain window. I know for a fact, um, on my son's 4.3 V6, I replaced the distributor about, I think, five years ago. And because his, his gear was so worn, this gear was so worn that it caused that code to occur, the, the synchronization error code. So I took the distributor out, which was a bear, by the way, to get to. Um, had that, uh, what they call, spider fuel injection on it. Um, I'm trying to remember what the ter correct terminology for that fuel injection is, but... Um, 
anyway, um, CPI, central port injection, had a injector spider underneath the top, underneath the plastic intake cover, it was kind of a mess, but anyway. Um, so in that particular case, the I put the distributor gear, I put or placed the distributor gear, not the whole distributor, but the distributor gear, which I, in hindsight I should have just bought the whole distributor. They're not they're about the same price as the gear. But um I replaced the gear and I had it off by 180 degrees. And you notice if you look at here, see that roll pin is kind of almost between two gears there. If I turn it 180 degrees, it's now on a gear. So if you get this wrong, you're off by half a tooth. Well, in this particular case, half a tooth was 22.5 degrees, and that's too much. It, it caused a cam synchronization error. Now, the reason it gave me that error, and uh, I could have fixed it at the time, but I, but I took the striver back out and rotated the gear around 180, put it back in. Um, but at the time, had I known a little bit more about it, all you have to do is rotate the striver a little bit, and voila, you fixed that problem. But in, that, in this particular case, I, I did it the right way. I swapped the gear around where it should have been. But once I get this distributor in, this distributor is a little different. Normally you see that flat right there. There's a steel bracket that holds the distributor in and those flats, that bracket grabs all those flats just like a wrench and it won't let it turn. So once you put the distributor in, it's locked in place. There's no adjustment. And your, your cam synchronization is set automatically by when you install the distributor. This particular distributor doesn't have that flat. I can't tell if it ever did because I don't see any wear marks or anything where there was a, any kind of a special bracket. So. This one is uh, installed with your standard hold down, stripper hold down. So this one, you can rotate this independent. And um, fortunately, I made a mark on here, um, right there, right there at my thumbnail. I made that mark and I did a video when I did this to correspond with, uh, I, think, I think it's that mark. I'll have to look at my video again, but I believe it's that tiny little mark right there. So my video shows the reference, the relationship between these two marks, and I'm gonna put the stripper exactly back like it was before. Once I, I'm gonna time it with the rotor, and then I'm gonna rotate it just a little, hopefully I'll just rotate just a little bit to where those marks are in the same position it was when I took it apart. That's assuming that there was no camp synchronization error when, this, when the customer delivered this boat to me, which is a big assumption. But anyway, I'm gonna run with that. We'll just have to see how it worked. So um, at this time, what I've got to do is figure out where, let's see. So I want this rotor pointed right here, right about, let me get this lined up, right there. When it's all the way down, I want it pointed right there. And when you drop these strippers in, they tend to move because these gears are helical, 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 not helicoil, helical gears. So as, you, as it drops in, it rotates the distributor. So what you have to do is move this back a little bit so as it, wrote, as it falls in, it rotates in place. And I'm gonna move it back to about right there. At the same time, there, <clears throat> in the bottom, you've got this slot right here. And that slot, I don't know if you can see it down in there. There you go, you can see it. That slot in the distributor has to line up with the slot in the oil pump. And that's what drives the oil pump. So you gotta get that lined up too. So what I'm gonna do is see, I'm gonna, put, I'm gonna find out where this distributor set before based on this notch and the and, and being inside there and see how close it was and then line everything up and drop this thing in there. So let me go and do that. Um, I don't have a two hands, so I'm gonna have to uh, stop the video and uh, do it and I'll show you the final result when it's in. But um, I, if there's anything worth worth mentioning, I'll tell you when, when I get that done. So stay tuned for that and I'll uh, install this distributor. All right, before I install the stripper, I just want to point out something. I just found out why there's a flat on the side of the stripper. The, uh, in, the intake manifold top half is, is running an angle like this, and they had to notch this distributor so it would clear it. That's why there's a flat there. I uh, had not realized that before. But um, So you pretty much have to install the stripper in this, this orientation. There's no other way to do it because the stripper body will hit that intake once it drops down. So just wanted to point that out to make it... Uh, it should have been obvious before, but I didn't pick up on that. Um, my marks are not quite lined up, they're close. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get everything oriented and drop the stripper in. Oh, by the way, I also left out the uh, the gasket that goes between them. So I gotta put that on first. All right, I now have the stripper installed. You can see that it's seated down. I've got the clamp on it and it's tightened down. I've got the gasket in there. And then if you look at the marks, like I was saying before, and in my previous video, in a video I did when I took this thing apart, those rotten marks were about in the same location or they're not perfectly lined up. The top one is just a tad to the right of the lower one. 
but that's exactly how it was when I took it apart. I explained in my video before that I just missed it with the uh, screwdriver tip. So um, this distributor is now installed. It's um, back in the same location it was before. The flat is in line with the engine and the rotor is pointed at number one spark plug tire. So as I was explaining before, this is statically timed now. Once you put the distributor cap on, everything's good to go. There's no timing to adjust. Um, the reason being, this is not a trigger for the ignition timing, so rotating it doesn't do anything. The trigger is at the crankshaft sensor. All this does is help the crank sensor figure out where it is in 720 degrees. So there's no point, once this thing's installed, or once this engine is put together and cranked up, the timing's already set. There's no adjustment. There's no dynamic timing that you set with the timing light. You can't adjust it. Um, actually, you can adjust it, but you have to be, uh, you have to have the proper software to go into the MEFI computer and change it in the, in the software if that's what you want to do, but um, I'm not doing that. So, um, this engine was built back to stock. There should be no need to change the entire, any of the program in the ME, MEFI computer. It should be just like it was when it was brand new. So, this stripper's now in. It's, uh, like I said, it's statically timed. Uh, it's not dynamically timed. There is no dynamic timing adjustment on these type of engines. You don't need to use a timing light. It's a lot different from some of the other videos I've done where you uh, do it. Once you get the stripper installed roughly at uh, static time, then you have to go back and use a timing light shooting the uh, timing marks and adjust your timing. So, uh, this, one, this one doesn't have any adjustment. One other thing, um, this distributor here in my hand is, uh, like I said, it's from an um, older 4.3 V6 that I took out of a, another truck. And um, I just use it, it doesn't have a gear on it, I just used it for uh, dropping in and orienting the uh, oil pump slot in the right location. That dark, that black line right there lines up with that uh, flat. Um, so basically what I'm saying is this bracket here is the proper bracket for this type of distributor. So it grips the flats like that. And uh, in this application, or in this, this uh, basically tool distributor, it just gets in the way when I try to use it. So uh, this, this flat, this, this uh, bracket is actually the proper bracket that goes here. So what I'm gonna do is loosen this bolt, take this bracket back off, and try to get this bracket off this distributor and pop it on that distributor and use the proper bracket for the application. I'm also gonna change that bolt. That bolt is uh, kind of rusty and I'm afraid it's gonna, the head's gonna break off. So I'm gonna take care of the customer and, replace the bracket with this bracket here. I have no need for it, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. The problem is it's kind of, these, uh, this bracket has a little bit of a nub, so it's kind of locked on there, but I think I can wedge it off or knock it off with some kind of tool, so I'm going to do that. I'll take care of that now and then uh, fix this distributor. I've now replaced the other uh, hole down with this bracket that anchors the distributor so it won't rotate and it uh, won't rotate at all. It's a little bit wobbly, but it doesn't rotate. And you can see that it uh, it did get the timing marks right on the money. So this bracket is the proper bracket for this application. Um, I'm gonna replace, even though I've got that bolt in there temporarily to hold it down, I'm gonna replace this bolt. It's an eight millimeter bolt. I don't have any currently in my shop. I'll have to buy one tomorrow. It's about one to one and a quarter inches long, um, which is uh, what, 30 millimeters on a metric. But I'll buy a bolt tomorrow to replace this. This bolt's rusted out, the head's about to break off, so uh, I'll buy a new bolt for that. But this is the proper bracket. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna tighten it down real quick and uh, tighten this thing down real quick. I don't like show wrenching because it wastes your time, but um, as we said, that uh, holds the stripper down pretty tight. Yeah, it did, so it got it down there. I don't know if you can see the marks. Uh, that's hard to see the marks. Let's see here. So the marks are still, yep, still lined up. Actually a little bit uh, more than we're for, but that's okay. Like I say, it doesn't have to be right on the money. This is just for uh, getting the cam sensors synchronized. So that clamp is uh, holding the distributor very tight and uh, it's actually better than it was for as far as lined up with the intake manifold. So, that bracket will work. All I gotta do is get the right bolt and they'll be taken care of. All right, this is uh, wraps up this video. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. And uh, thanks for, uh, if you haven't subscribed, please do so. And um, hope you enjoy the video and uh, let me know if you got any questions.